ultralight is the best, am I right? Or can ultralight gear sacrifice too much comfort and ruin your time on trail? Today, I am comparing ultralight gear to comfort gear head to head to see which is better. Let's see when it's better to sacrifice in order to save a gram or when you might wanna lean a little bit more towards comfort. Starting with packs, we have the ultralight Z-Pax Arc Hall 50. And then for a more comfort oriented pack, we have the REI Flash 55. It'd be easy to say to just pick ultra gear or comfort gear depending on what sort of trip you're going on, but most people out there, they don't have access to an ultralight kit and a comfort kit. So I'm approaching this video like I'm making purchases for the first time, and I'm either having to choose between an ultralight item and a comfort item for all of my trips moving forward. For packs, it's kind of an easy choice, price aside. Most ultralight gear has to sacrifice features or performance in order to save weight, but with the Z-Pax Arcol, it's very feature wit rich. You have this trampoline back on here. It's able to carry 40 pounds, no problem. You have a full hip belt as well as a frame made with carbon fiber stays. You don't really lose much out on features or performance. The only difference between the Arc Hall and the Flash 55 is that the Flash 55 is gonna be able to carry a little bit more weight and it also costs significantly less. You even get adjustable torso with the Flash 55, which is a feature that you don't really see at all on other ultralight packs. That's not to say that the Flash 55 isn't also a great pack. It's very feature rich, and if you need to be carrying a lot of weight, then it might be the option for you. I've carried over 40 pounds in this pack, no problem, and it often goes on sale at close to $100, which makes it significantly less expensive than the Z-Pax Arc Hall. While you can cut the weight of your backpack in half by going with the Z-Pax Arc Hall versus the REI Flash 55, the difference between the two tents that I have here is even greater. The Sea to Summit Telos three person, which is my go-to comfort tent, weighs five times as much as my go-to solo ultralight tent, the Z-Pax Plex Solo. I mostly backpack solo and on my solo trips, weight is a priority. So for that reason, the Plex Solo is my choice as far as ultralight versus comfort. If I'm sharing a tent more with other people and backpacking more as a couple, then I definitely go with the Sea to Summit Telos three person. This tent is an insanely roomy palace while still weighing under two kilograms and has a lot of great features that just make it a great tent, like the ability to set it up fly first, as well as this higher brow pole, which makes it very easy to get in and out of the tent. And when you're comparing these two tents, price isn't as much of a factor. You can definitely get less expensive tents than both of these. The Telos costs $700, which is kind of crazy. Usually the comfort items on this list are gonna cost a little bit less, whereas the Plex Solo costs $600. You can check out both of these tents as well as all the gear we're talking about today at links in the video description. Sleeping pads are easy. I'll prioritize a good sleep on trail any day of the week. I've spent weeks on trail, sleeping on an x -Lite, being uncomfortable with my arm going numb and falling asleep. So for that reason, my sleeping pad of choice is the REI Helix, which is a pad that prioritizes comfort and warmth. The REI Helix weighs twice as much as the Thermarest x -Lite, but it's one of only a few pads where I've slept through the entire night without waking up as I toss and turn and have to deal with arms going numb. With the Helix, I'm consistently warm, and always having a comfortable sleep. A pillow was probably the hardest choice out of all the items we're looking at today due to the fact that I've made a new Franken pillow out of a Big Sky Dream Sleeper and then Dyneema patches from Z-Pax. I took the Dyneema patches with have, which have these little fabric loops on them, attached a shock cord to it, and then I now have an ultralight pillow that weighs 52 grams all in that can go on a pad and stay put. Considering the Dream Sleeper is just a TPU bladder essentially, it's also quite comfortable, it has really good baffling, so it's super supportive. And then it has a kind of a little squishy feel to it without feeling like you're laying on a balloon. So let's talk about why I didn't choose the X-Ped Mega Pillow, because this is probably the most comfortable pillow that I've ever used. It's almost as wide as most 25 inch wide sleeping pads. It has a really good height to it, a nice soft fabric material. It has a little bit of insulation, so it is warm. And then it also is very supportive at the same time. Overall, the X-Ped Mega Pillow is the most comfortable camp pillow that I've ever used, but it weighs 200 grams, which is four times as much as my Big Sky Dream Sleeper Franken pillow. So for that reason, I have to go with the Dream Sleeper. For me, I get equally as good of nights of sleep with this. I've used the Dream Sleeper with the REI Helix and slept through the night without waking up. And for me, that's the metric as to whether I'm getting a good sleep or not. You can see my full ultralight and ultra comfort gear lists over at the sponsor of today's video, packwizard.com. You can also create your own gear lists using Packwizard by easily adding gear from our gear database. Simply start by typing the name of an item, 
select what you want, and all the specs and information for that piece of gear will automatically populate. It's an easy way to plan for a trip and see how much all of your gear is gonna weigh so that you're not carrying extra weight in your pack. You can also then turn that gear list into a checklist and cross items off as you pack so you're not gonna forget anything. This checklist feature has saved my butt multiple times on a bunch of different trips. If you're looking for a new piece of gear, you can also filter through over 2,000 tents, packs, pads, quilts, and sleeping bags, and compare up to three different options to find the best option for you. I'll link to Pack Wizard as well as my pack gear list down below. I don't know if it's an emotional attachment or something, but I can't not pick the BRS 3000 stove when compared to all-in-one, easier to use options like the MSR Windburner. The MSR Windburner is gonna boil water faster, it's gonna be easier to use, and it's gonna work better in variable conditions due to having a solid regulator, as well as having a very innovative, good burner on it, and then also having built-in wind protection. But the BRS 3000 works well enough for me, and I love that I can fit the stove, pot grippers, my mini Bic lighter, as well as a fuel canister into a lightweight 550 milliliter pot and having a total stove kit weight of under 100 grams. I can see why the wind burner would be a great stove option for a lot of people out there, but I love my BRS stove and my ultralight cook kit. I just dropped the L word talking about the BRS stove, so I guess it is an emotional attachment. Just don't tell Steffi Poo. When it comes to illumination, my needs really change with the seasons. When it's summertime, it's usually dark after I go to bed and it's usually light before I wake up. So I'm not using a light very often. Whereas in the wintertime, up here in Canada, when we have 16 hours of darkness, a uh, good light is much more important. As much as I love the Rovivon A5 flashlight because of how lightweight it is while still being very effective, if I only had to choose one form of illumination, it would probably be a headlamp just due to the versatility. And I'd go with the Nightcore NU25 because of just how lightweight it is while still being a very effective headlamp. A nice feature that the NU25 and the Rovion both have is that they use USB-C ports in order to charge the rechargeable batteries. At this point, almost all of my devices are now USB-C, which I love. Unless you are in very tough or rooty ground, the Bogler trowel is gonna be all you need. It's very lightweight, but still very strong. I've pried lots of rocks out of the ground with this, and then it has a serrated edge on one side, so you can cut through roots very easily at the same time. If you need something more robust, the Vargo Dig Dig is an insane trowel. You get serrated edges on both sides. It's made with titanium and is very strong. You could dig to China with this thing. It's an insane trowel. The durability of the Dig Dig and the shape of it also makes it a better option if you want to use your trowel for dual purpose and use it also as a tent stake. If you're interested in cottage gear like the Bogler trowel, go check out this video right up here. I go on a trip where I try to use only cottage gear. I did have to make some compromises when it came to that, and I also made some gear choices that raised some eyebrows as to whether it was truly cottage gear or not. 